Hello everyone! So today is the day we are going to display text on the screen. We have been promising this for quite a while. So now after all of the buildup, we are ready to go. In our last video, we talked about um, how to set the video mode to 3. And um, the way we did that was this AX03 and we called 10H, which, are, uh, which is our video services. And then after that, we just halt the processor. Uh, I did want to mention that technically you could do AH to 0 and AL to 3 because if we go to our handy website that I am working on, BIOS programming, and if we go under setting the display, uh, there's a lot more details here now. But if we look at our video services, we can see that the zero video service, so if we put zero into AH, then AL needs to be set with the mode, which is three. So if you're wondering how that actually worked, that is how zero goes into AH, which means set the video mode, three goes into AL, which is the actual video mode we want. Now, you'll remember we sort of cheated that by having AX, which is um, setting the entire word to three, so the high byte will automatically be set to zero and the low byte will be set to three. And this saves us a byte. Instead of using four bytes, I believe it is, we'll, uh, of instructions, we'll only be using three bytes. All right, without further ado, let's get into displaying text on the screen. So if we go back to the website, there is displaying text. And you can follow along at home if you use this. It explains some of the things that I will be talking about here today. Anyway, um, let's jump into it. So I'm going to include comments because assembly is not the fastest programming language to write in. So we might as well be detailed, right? So we're going to put display a character because that's what we're going to do first before we even think about um, a string. So what we're going to do is we're going to move into AH the hexadecimal number E, which is display a TTY or teletype character. And if we look at our video services here, you can see that AH is 0E, AL is the character we want to write, and then you have BH, which is the page to display it on. I even had a comment saying that I didn't mention this before. Um, this doesn't appear to work in our emulator. I, I have tried. <laughs> and if you know how to make it work, please let me know because um, I can add a comment and or add it to the description. But currently, I can't get it to work. Um, if we were running on top of a true BIOS on a PC from the 80s or 90s, maybe it would work. Um, but in our emulator, it doesn't. And then BL is for when you're in graphics modes, setting the color of your pixels. Um, since we're doing, we're clearly not in a graphics mode. Um, we are in a text mode. It basically does nothing and there are no returns. Um, one caveat, if you actually are writing for an old computer, some BIOSes require that BH is set to the current page that you are on. And um, if you want more details on that, let me know. It's really hard to visualize, though, since we can't actually get it to work. Or at least I can't. Maybe you can. And if you can, let me know. All right. Enough about that. So E and then our ASCII character. So let's put in an ASCII character. And the AL, let's put in the letter C for character. And we're going to not worry about the page stuff since that doesn't actually work in our emulator. 
um, and not worry about colors because it doesn't necessarily really apply with our emulator either we will call our interrupt 10 which is our video services so we're basically saying we want to do a video service and it will look at the table and go oh you want to call the E or what is that in number wise 14 yes 14 um, you want to call the 14th um, method or subroutine and then that says okay look at AL and display character C so let's run it and prove that it works and we have the letter C on the screen all right we have displayed a character so next let's actually work with a string because that's why all of you came here right so what we need is a label and the way you create a label is by putting a colon at the end of the name of it we're going to use DB here because we're working with bytes and we'll say hello world and we're going to add a null character so if you work in C programming languages the null character you you know you've forgotten it at least once <laughs> and you've had a buffer overflow um, it's basically like the period at the end of a sentence or it, it says stop working with my string my string is now done so uh, we're obviously we're going to drop that into there and all right let's see we are going to have to work with um, loops I hope I explained the label well enough yes okay so what I did want to say is what the label does is it's kind of like a bookmark it actually doesn't go into your code but what it does is it says you are currently at this address so if we um, well let's look at it why why make stuff up when we can actually look so if we open up our binary file here you can see hello world starts here so it starts at the 13th byte in our code which is great you could actually when you want to call this address you could hard code in the number 13 or 0xd however as we add more code in here so even though it doesn't make sense to halt the processor twice we will add that in there so that you can see that it has moved over by one so this would obviously be a nightmare every time you add an instruction to know where your RAM has shifted so rather than having to keep track of the actual number of the address manually the assembler takes care of that for you and it will automatically associate this label with whatever memory address you're at okay so now we need to actually loop through we want AL to be set to these characters one at a time and then we're going to display them on the screen so what we're going to start working with is we're going to work with the source index register the string source index and we are going to put in hello label so this is the address of our string oh I went past my comment lines address of string there we go we're not going to worry about AL for now we're going to create another label and I'll just call it loop uh, I can't call it that that's a keyword uh, let's call it character loop and in our character loop we're gonna do load string byte what this does is it looks at SI which is currently sitting right at this letter H and it will actually take H and load it into AL automatically for us and then it will increment SI by one so that it'll be looking at address the address where the E is and then when we call this again it will load that into AL so on and so forth 
So um, that's a nifty little function. However, we don't want to display this null character. If we just put in here um, int 10h, it will display h and there we go. We don't need to call that twice. It will display the letter h and then it will be done running. And I can prove that to you. That's the fun thing about this. Make changes and test, right? There's the letter H. Okay, so we can put in here that we want to jump back up to our character loop. This is basically an infinitely while loop. So it'll do H and then it'll do the E and then it'll go through all the letters of hello world. And then it will do the zero and it'll just keep on going until, um, well, I would imagine until bad things happen and it starts trying to access memory it doesn't have access to and um, we don't want to do that. So we need to break out of our infinite while loop somehow. And the way we're going to do that is we are going to use or and we're going to say or a l a l. Essentially what this does is it looks at all of the bits of a l and it ors them with all of the bits of AL, which doesn't really make sense. However, if it is a zero, it's going to OR two zeros and it's going to set the zero flag. And the zero flag is what we're about to use next because we're going to say jump if it, the zero flag is set to jump to break out another label. All right. So now this should say hello world on our screen. And it does. So there you go. That's hello world. As easy as that. Now we've used a while loop. Why don't we look into using a for loop? Because there's more than one type of loop. So let's do that next. We can get rid of our null character because we actually will no longer be looking at the null character. However, we need to know how long this string is. So what we're going to do is a neat little trick where we take our current address. You'll remember from the explanation on this what these dollar signs mean. This is our current address. And we're going to subtract the address of hello label. So currently our address is right after our, the string. And we're going to subtract the beginning, which will give us the length of this string. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to move into our counter register the value of hello length. Not the address, but the actual value stored at that address. So that will now be stored into that feel like I'm doing something wrong because this is only a byte and this is a word. Let's make this a word as well. We'll see what happens. All right, so we're going to move this word into CX. And instead of doing a loop or a jump, I should say, we're going to do a loop. So the way this works now is all of this is the same, obviously. We didn't touch it, but CX will equal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 characters. So this should equal 10. And it will run through and automatically subtract 1 from CX from us. So then it'll do, it'll do 10, 9, 8, 7, all the way down until it's 0. When CX is 0, the loop will stop doing its thing. And we don't need a breakout label anymore, it'll automatically go and halt our processor. Let's prove that that works. Nope, bad things happened. All right, what went wrong? Let's change this back to a byte. Oh, that didn't change anything. Well, now the question is, what did I do wrong? Oh, ha <laughs> ha. Hello label. Yes. No. We need hello length. 
I know you guys probably caught that and were laughing at me, but um, we all make mistakes. Remember that when you make them. <laughs> there we go. So now it does exactly the same thing. So we've done it now with a while loop and we've done it with a for loop. Which one uses less bytes? Well, let's take a look at our input here. We can see that this is going all the way to the third line here. Technically, this zero, I would say, is being used because this is a word. And remember, we're on a little endian processor. Um, little endian, which means that the numbers of the bytes are stored in reverse order. And we've talked about this um, before. So we're to this byte. If we undo all of this and get back to the while loop, we can take a look and see how much memory it consumed. Oops, I went back a little bit too far. Yes, that should do it. Make it again. Take a look at it again. We can see that the last number we have is here for hello world. Don't forget about our null byte. So that is here. So what that tells us is that the while loop is one byte shorter than the for loop. And um, I have actually reverse engineered some binary files made by Pascal or Delphi or they're kind of the same thing. But I noticed in the binary files, it didn't use null terminations like this, like C uses. It would prefix it using a short or a word in this case of how long that string was. So I suspect, I haven't looked, but I suspect that under the hood that Pascal's using a for loop for its strings, whereas C uses the null termination. And as we see here, at least in this example, uh, it's one byte shorter. So I don't know if that's why, but um, that was just something that I noticed. And um, it, it's fun to notice things like that. If you're programming in assembly, these are how you're going to get your kicks, is noticing these, these little intricacies. So anyway, that's all that I have for you. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was entertaining, and next, I believe we're going to start to look into getting inputs, because whether you're working with a Hello World or flashing an LED on some sort of computer chip, um, generally, after you do your output, you start working with inputs. Makes sense. So let's start to look at inputs in our next video. We will see you then.